Hey, what's going on, fellas? I want to share with you guys a little trick that will enable you to turn almost any pump into any flow rate or any pressure you need that is within the limitations of that pump. Let's say you need a thousand PSIs at 30 milliliters a minute, very small flow rates. Buying a pump that can provide a very high pressure, very small flow rate is almost impossible to find. Just try and find one, and unless you got about five grand laying around, you're out of luck. So laying on the floor here is my second solution to that problem. We've all seen the bypass valve videos. Well, I have here a pressure washer pump that I'm just gonna use as an exhibit to show us how to hook this thing up. This is basically a bypass valve that I've built for a customer. This is for Alan, and this video is going to kind of show him how to adjust the pressure on this thing. And I think I'm going to, um, I don't know if I should bother trying to sell this or not. I may sell it with my kits, but I don't know if I'll bother selling it individually. Anybody could just throw this together. So I just want to show you how you can do this if you come across that problem where you have any type of pump. And I'm talking even small pumps this will work on. Even like gear rotor pumps like this and stuff, you'll often have trouble finding one that can provide the pressure and flow rate you need. And I know what you're thinking, just modulate the power output. Well, that doesn't work so well at high pressure. Kind of find out when you try to run a small motor like this at high pressure, with low output, you burn the motor up. The RPMs just have to be slow, and then to get the torque you need, you gotta crank the amps. It's just, it's a nightmare. So this provides a solution. This is called a bypass valve. Let's hook it up and I'll show you what happens. Okay, essentially, this portion right here is the intake. That's where the water comes in at. So we would connect that to the intake of our pressure washer. Most pressure washers have a receptacle that receives a standard garden hose. The discharge, however, is a little bit different. Not all pressure washers use this type of connection. If it does not, you'll have to splice the hose and connect one of these to it. Most pressure washers use this type of fitting. That would connect here. This particular rig is not to go over 300 PSI's, just because it, it's an economy unit. It wasn't made, the amount of money I should have put in this to this just wasn't available. So this is what we're working with. So the way this thing works is we have two valves on here. This I like to call the flow rate valve because this is what I use to control the flow rate to whatever it is I'm distributing fluid to or metering fluid to. In this particular case, we're gonna be running a monotube steam pressure washer. So what we would do to adjust the pressure is, is if this valve is completely closed, all the pressure coming out of the discharge is forced out of the discharge to the monotube boiler or to whatever you want to provide pressure to. Let's say you want to pump some high pressure oil at a very low flow rate, but you can't find a pump to do it. So what we would do is we would first start with this valve closed, okay, and this valve open. You never want to close this valve all the way. You'll likely blow the system up if this valve is closed too. So to start off, you would fire up the pump and then close this valve until the pressure you want is available. At that point, you would open this valve to get the flow rate very close to what you want. That's gonna cause a subtle drop in pressure here, which you would then make adjustments for by closing the valves a little bit more until you got the pressure and the flow exactly where you want it. You would step into it that way. You would first close this, or you would first open this a little bit until the flow you got the pressure will drop, you close the valve to increase it, and so on. It may take two or three steps of that sequence to achieve the pressure you're looking for. But that's basically the gist of it. Uh, this is about $95 worth of parts, guys. I know it's, actually it's more than that. I provided the valves and these two T's, these two brass T's, they were out in Menard, so I had to use some of my own stock on that. These valves I get for really cheap, so you got lucky on that, Alan. Uh, 
this is about a ten dollar valve here you'd be paying ten bucks for this so this unfortunately is over a hundred bucks in hardware anybody who's ever bought brass fittings before knows my pain this piece does not come with it brass is just very expensive and you can't use steel on this it'll rust in no time so there you go now that's about the most economical configuration that you can put this stuff together in there's as far as using nipples and all that there are other ways to attach these and I know some of it may look redundant but they just don't make fittings that go straight to each other that's just they don't have that big of a variety so this right here an easy hundred bucks guys and parts but this will get you out of a, a jam when you and then keep you from having to spend hundreds of dollars on a pump so if you already have a pressure washer and you're interested in one of the steam guns this is going to be the new solution to that alan kind of helped bring that to my attention it is buried somewhere on a post-it note I know it's over here somewhere I'm not gonna sift through it but you see <laughs> things tend to get a little buried around here I know that's up here just didn't have the time to do it and um, it has now become a necessity so that's what we got guys this is the bypass valve and like I said you can build one of these to hook up to any pump the trick is is the way you trap the fluid um, I'll try and provide a schematic diagram for this because I know it's kind of hard to look at but uh, that's where we're at hell let's just do this man I ain't got time guys here's a quick schematic for you you have your pump let's say the discharge comes out the front there we are going to hook that up to a T so we can get a pressure gauge on it got our pressure gauge here then this is going to come up to another T which is our discharge T which has our discharge or flow rate valve on it oh sorry about that glare then we're going to come back this way we'll skip over this and we're going to connect directly to a valve here that connects to another T that connects to the input of the pump okay and then this is the source so if you close this valve completely all of the discharge is forced out this valve if it's open of course let's say it is in this case so as we open this valve more flow is allowed to go from the pump through the system and right back into the intake of the pump so it's circulating that way you're not spraying water all over the place or oil or whatever this that's why it's called bypass it should be called a loop bypass or something like that if any of you guys out there in process control land know the actual name for this hit us up because i'm just naming shit if it bounces off the wall i don't use it type thing so that's what's stuck and um that's my amazing diagram i got a roll fellas